welcome to another Water Trek 360. For fun, I'm going to change things up a bit. Some of you know I like to do 360 video. They're a lot of fun. Underwater, however, there are more challenges than topside. Besides the absence of light and the loss of color, since 360s have two lenses, refraction is a challenge. All 360 videos have stitch lines. Underwater, with a housing, those become more pronounced. Some housings produce less noticeable stitch lines than others. I'm not going to get into the technical specifications of the camera settings. I really want to talk about being more creative and getting unique images and functionality you cannot get with a GoPro or a standard lens. I have two 360 cameras at the moment. The first is a Garmin Verb. I've had it about five years. That goes to about 10 meters and there are no underwater housings for it to my knowledge. So I mostly use a topside. It's officially listed as discontinued by Garmin, so I try to protect it. I like the results on land that I've gotten, so I've kept it. It can shoot 5K at 30 FPS unstitched and 4K 30 FPS with the camera internal stitching. The other camera I use is an Insta One 360R dual version. It has a one inch flat camera as well as the two dual 360 lenses. It also can shoot at 5K. Uh, it's good to about five meters, but there are several manufacturers that make housing so you can take it well over hundred feet. Check out my video on which housing worked best for me with it. A link will be in the description. So, Let's look at some fun ways to use a 360 underwater. As I have said many times, I am generally not a still photographer, but I do like what I can do with the 360 camera, allowing me to create still images that you simply can't get using a traditional camera. With my first housing, it let me create these great versions of Tiny Planet or Inverted Tiny Planet that had these encapsulated images. This was due to the black ring that encircled the lens. The black ring impacted the stitching while doing video, so I opted for a different housing. The next housing had no black ring and allowed for similar images, but still had stitching issues that weren't clean. I settled on the light bulb housing, one that is now pushed by Insta360, much cleaner stitch lines. So how do I do it? I use an expandable selfie stick pole that I mount to a tripod holder. Uh, when I set it up, I try to get six or more feet away, depending upon how large or small you want to be in the shot. I didn't like how the tiny planet looked in this case, so I inverted it for this particular photo. To me, it looks better. One of the lessons learned was to get a heavy enough selfie pole. Several times I had it get knocked over by surge or current, which just exacerbates the situation. Also, when working with lots of people, as in the case of this photo, about 12 people, you need to prepare folks prior to the dive so that they understand what you are trying to do. With an underwater housing, you will also find that the nadir is much bigger due to refraction. You will need to plan for this in any shots that you take. As you can see, folks had a lot of fun putting this together. One of the things you can do with a 360 camera that you can't do with a traditional 180 like a GoPro or an iPhone is that if you have it mounted and it's stationary, post-production you can change the viewing to any angle that you want. In this sequence you can see the hard stitch line that I got from my second housing. Again, since there's so much you can do post-production with the camera and the viewing, 
There's no way I would be able to get this shot with a GoPro as I put it inside a barrel sponge. Again, be careful when you're dealing with any marine life that you don't bang it or hurt it or puncture it. But this shot was quite amazing. With the newest housing that I got, the clearest uh, indication that it was working well was that you don't see a lot of seam lines. And those seam lines are way smaller than the stitches that you've seen on the two previous housing. In this video clip, all change in direction was also done post-production. There are many ways to be creative. It's only limited by your vision. In this clip, I combine topside footage of an osprey nest at an island lighthouse with underwater video to tell the story. I like that 360 gives you the ability to provide underwater video where the viewer can interact with the subject. This wreck video will be released in a few weeks, and if someone wants to dive this wreck with me, they can view it 50 times and see it 50 different ways. This really allows the viewer to get as much or as little out of the experience as they want. One of the challenge I mentioned is color loss. I've yet to find a camera housing for the true 360 camera that has red filter capabilities. The Insta1 does have a post-production process called Aquavision that can color correct to a degree, but I've not seen any camera that can address the color loss with just artificial intelligence. The 360 is also a great tool for me. One of the things I like to do is sketch the wreck as it looks underwater so that I can provide a visual reference for the viewer of what they are seeing on screen as the diver, or me, swims by. In post-production, I am able to view multiple perspectives of the wreck, seeing details I totally missed with my GoPro since I wasn't viewing it from those angles. Without the 360, my sketches would not be as finely tuned as they are, nor done as quickly. One major downside to 360 videos versus 180 flat viewing is that the file sizes are pretty big. The compression algorithms that social media uses on your video to save storage end up leaving less sharp images and unfortunately grainier images than you see on your own screen or that you see on standard 180 videos. This is a trade-off for the true 360 video. The next minute or so is a preview of an upcoming 360 rec video that I'm working on. Enjoy! Well, I hope you had as much fun watching that video as I did making it. Do check out the technology if you don't have a 360 camera. Hopefully I piqued your interest. If you do have a 360 camera, these are some of the ways I use it to expand the images that I produce. Check out my videos on the housings to use for the Insta1, as well as some of the videos done with it, rec videos, as well as my other rec videos. I have video out there on housings for the iPhone 13 Pro and some new 360 video coming soon. So please be on the lookout for those. Scuba diving is supposed to be a lot of fun. Using tools like this only adds to the experience. And as always, until next time, go explore, get wet. <laughs>